So in this video, I'm going to show you how to rebuild a bicycle wheel with a different rim. So this is a task that you'd want to undertake if you ever had a rim that was pretty badly damaged. Uh, for example, if you're riding your bike and you crashed into a, a pothole in the road really, really hard, there's a good chance it would do some damage to your wheel. You know, it would make a, a big indentation in your rim um, in one of the spots. Um, or if, for example, you're mountain biking and you, you, uh, you crash into a tree, um, that's going to do some, some pretty bad damage to the rim of your wheel. So immediately after something like that happens, if you spin your wheel, you'll notice that the wheel you know, drifts very far from side to side because that rim um, is so badly bent and so badly damaged. If the amount of damage is quite small and it really just kind of moves a very small amount from side to side, you'll probably be able to get away with not actually just replacing the rim, um, just simply by retruing the wheel. I do have another video on YouTube which will show you how to straighten, or in other words, how to true a bicycle wheel. In my case, the reason that I'm changing my rim is because I had some really bad damage happen to mine and I'm not really sure how it happened, um, but somehow one of my spokes got pulled through and it made a really, really big crack and a big hole um, in my rim. You know, the hole originally would have been the size of this and uh, for some reason it got pulled through. Now this didn't happen um, from any kind of an accident or anything, I just was riding and when I stopped I just noticed um, that one of my spokes was loose and I looked and it had this big crack. Um, so as I said, I don't think I, I did anything to cause this. I think it probably was just some kind of a manufacturing defect in the rim to begin with. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to replace this whole rim with a new rim. So just to clarify some terminology, these long metal sticks here um, are called the spokes of the wheel. This is what a brand new one looks like. And as you can see on one of the ends, there's a bend and then there's that big circle on the end there. So that circle gets threaded through the holes which are in this metal piece here which is called the hub. And then on the other end, we have these things on them which are called nipples. Nipples and spokes basically work together the same way that nuts and bolts work together. Um, so on the end of the spoke, as you can see, there's some threads there. And the nipple has corresponding threads. So when you thread this on, what you're effectively doing is you're tightening this spoke and making this part of the wheel more tight. So if you look inside the rim, you'll probably see some kind of a strip of rubbery material uh, which runs on the inside of there. In most cases, it's usually a black piece of rubber, um, but for some reason this one happens to be yellow. Um, that's basically just in there to protect the inner tube um, from making contact with where the nipples go in. Um, but we're going to start in this tutorial by removing that. Um, so you can just use a flathead screwdriver just to get it started, and then you can just kind of pull it over the edge, and it should come off fairly easily. So now with that strip removed, you can now look inside of those holes and you can see the ends of the nipples in there. So since we're going to take this rim off, what we're going to do is we're going to loosen off all of these nipples. But before we do that, it's a good idea to lubricate each of the nipples to make sure that it will spin nice and easily when we're doing that. Um, so for lubricating, I'm just going to use um, some chain lube. This is just the same kind of oil um, that I put on my chain um, each time that I lubricate it. So just basically just put a drop inside each one of these onto each one of the nipples and that will increase the amount of lubrication in there so that when we're taking it off um, it's just gonna you know spin a lot easier. So now that we've got all the nipples lubricated we're gonna actually loosen them off and there's three different options you have for doing that. Um, the first one is to get one of these which is called the spoke wrench and that fits right onto these square part here at the end and you just grip onto that and you use that to loosen it. Spoke wrenches come in various different sizes. Um, these are two of the common sizes. They also sell um, spoke wrenches that look like this, which are a universal one that have um, a whole bunch of different sizes. Um, I personally prefer to use the fitted ones because when I'm using this, um, every time that I put the wrench on um, to tighten or loosen a spoke, I have to find you know which is the right hole to use for that spoke. If you don't have a spoke wrench, you can also use an adjustable wrench on those same flat spots to use that for rotating it. Um, the only disadvantage is um, that with the other spokes in the way, um, usually you can only turn the wrench about a quarter turn at a time, um, so it makes it a lot more time consuming. The third option is to use a flathead screwdriver. Now if you'll notice on the end of the spoke there, there's a little slot that's cut in there, so you can put your flathead screwdriver on the end there and you can use that for tightening or loosening the nipple. 
So now using whichever method you want, you can loosen off each of those nipples. And if you're confused about which direction you're supposed to rotate um, to loosen it off, you can use the right hand rule for that. Uh, so what we want is we want our nipple to go in the up direction. So it'll be you know, getting further away from our hub. Uh, so we use our thumb to point in that direction. And then we use our fingers to indicate the direction that we rotate. So we're going to rotate in this direction and get that nice and loosened off. And I want to loosen each one of these in equal amount. So on this one you can see I've done it to a point where a few of the threads are showing. Um, so I'm going to do that for every nipple and then move on to the next one and do the same with that one and work my way around the whole wheel. Actually something that I forgot to mention is if you're doing this task on a rear wheel and uh, your rear wheel has one of these uh, threaded on freewheel cassettes like mine does, um, it's a really good idea to take your cassette off before loosening off any of the spokes. Um, because when that cassette's on there, you really don't have access um, to these inner spokes here. And if you happen to break one of them in the process of building this wheel, um, it's very difficult to be able to take this off to be able to replace it um, if all your spokes are already loose. All right, so I've worked my way around the whole rim and I've gotten all the spokes that they're all really nice and loose. As you can see, when I squeeze on them, um, they're you know very, very loose. And I did it in a systematic way um, by leaving um, just a few threads uh, showing at the end of each of the spokes where the nipple attaches. Um, so the next step here is to actually transfer everything to the new rim. Um, so here's the new rim right here. All you've got to do is just put the two rims side by side and then one by one you go to each uh, spoke and you loosen the nipple so that it goes all the way off and then you take it right off the end there and put the nipple inside of the other rim and then you just move the spoke from this wheel to that wheel and then you tighten it back on to where the nipple is now and then you just work your way you know, around the whole wheel. Just to keep things simple, I think it makes sense to line up uh, the holes where the two valve stems go. Uh, but one thing you have to be aware of, if we take a look at this rim here, um, you'll notice that these holes where the, where the nipples go are not exactly centered in the middle of the rim here. Um, this one here, it's a little bit um, in this direction. This one here, it's a little bit in that direction. And they actually do that on purpose uh, because half the spokes go to one side of the hub and the other half go to the other side of the hub. Um, so they reposition them so that they're a little bit closer um, to each of the hubs. Uh, but if you're going to do this, you have to make sure uh, that your old rim and your new rim um, have things so that they're the same. So if the hole on this side of the valve stem happened to be um, on the other side, then what you would do is you just rotate you know, by one spoke there um, so that these guys would be the same and these guys would be the same. Uh, but in my case, the rims are exactly the same. Um, this one is on that side and this one is also on that side. All right, so I've got the valve stems there lined up and we're gonna work our way around in this direction. So I'm gonna start with this one right here and um, I've already gotten it quite loose so I should just be able to loosen it off with my fingers. And after I've got it to the end of the threads there, I'm just gonna use this small little screwdriver just to push it through and you could hear it fell on the ground there. All right, so now I picked that nipple up off the ground and I'm just gonna insert it into the new wheel here, like so. And just to make sure that my nipple doesn't get pushed back through inside of the wheel, um, I've got my flathead screwdriver pushing up against the back of it. And then all I have to do is just pull this spoke out from that wheel and line it up with that hole there. And then just rotate this on. And again, using the right hand rule, uh, we wanna rotate it um, in that direction. I can feel that it's biting into the threads. And you don't want to tighten it too much. Again, you want to leave lots of slack. It'll make the other spokes a lot easier to do. All right, so I'm finished about a third of the wheel now. Um, starting from here, continued all the way around up until this point here. I haven't moved these guys yet, uh, nor have, the, have I on the rest of the wheel there either. Uh, but this is the position that I found seems to work the best for, uh, for doing this part of the job. Um, I can put this wheel here sitting on this lawn chair that just seems to fit it really nicely and uh, then I can just put a chair right here and that gives me a really nice view looking at the end of the spokes uh, which makes it really easy to be able to take the nipples in and out uh, because this particular wheel um, is fairly challenging to do, more challenging than the other ones that I've done before uh, because it actually has two layers of aluminum there. Uh, so when you're popping the nipples in and out, um, sometimes they get stuck between the two layers 
and when that happens it really um, slows things down a lot. So being able to have a good view of it, I'm able to just kind of pop it out and grab it from the other side and uh, be able to move on and um, you know do them all very quickly. There's an example of one of the nipples stuck inside between the two layers uh, which makes it really difficult to be able to get back out again. Alright so I worked my way around the whole wheel now and transferred over all the spokes so my old rim can now be completely taken off and all we're left with is the the new rim on the wheel. So as you can see there's still quite a few threads on each of the spokes which means that the spokes are still quite loose. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to systematically go around the whole wheel again and I'm going to tighten up all of these um, so that they're covering up, uh, just barely covering up all of the threads and uh, that's going to help to ensure uh, that every spoke is going to have approximately the same amount of tension on it. Alright, so I worked my way around the whole wheel and I've gotten all the nipples so they're tightened up so that almost all of the threads are covered up by the nipples. And uh, having done that, now the wheel's starting to kind of, you know, be more like a wheel. All the spokes are starting to get uh, fairly tight. Uh, they're not, you know, completely tight quite yet. Most bike shops have a tool which they can use, which they put on a spoke and will tell them how tight the spoke is. Uh, but for the average person doing this job at home, uh, you likely won't have access to one of those tools. So my recommendation for getting the spokes so that they're, you know, approximately at the right tension is just take another wheel. Uh, for example, this wheel is from the front wheel of my bike. And uh, just simply by squeezing on these, you know, qualitatively, you get a pretty good idea of how tight those are and you can compare it to the tightness of the wheel that you're building. So since the spokes on this wheel are a bit looser than the wheel that I'm comparing it to, um, I'm going to work my way around the wheel and tighten up all the spokes a uniform amount. Um, so I'm going to do that very systematically. I'm going to start from where the valve stem is and I'm going to start by doing half turns. I'm going to do a half turn uh, for every single spoke all the way around the wheel until I get right back to the valve stem again. Um, so I'm going to do that to do a half turn. You just put your spoke wrench on so it's like that and uh, make sure you know the correct direction for tightening. So what we want to do to tighten it is we want that nipple to go down closer to the hub to make you know, the effective length of the, sh the spoke so it's shorter. Um, so using my thumb I want it to go in the direction where my thumb is pointing and my fingers curl in direction of rotation. So starting from there I'm going to turn it and now the tool is facing the opposite direction so that's a half turn. And then I'll do it for the next one and the next one and all the way around the wheel. So I worked my way all the way around the wheel now and things are feeling a little bit tighter uh, but still not quite as tight as the wheel that I'm comparing it to. Uh, so I'm going to repeat that process um, a few more times until uh, the two wheels are feeling uh, so they're very very similar. And uh, once I start to get, you know, so I'm really close, uh, then I might switch from doing uh, half turns to doing quarter turns instead. Um, just to make sure that I don't overshoot and over tighten it. Alright, so I've got all my spokes tightened up now and the tension on the spokes uh, feels quite comparable uh, to the other wheel that I'm comparing it with. Uh, so the wheel is pretty much built now, uh, but we still have to do um, a few minor adjustments to get the wheel so that it's finished. Someone doing this professionally would probably use a truing stand for doing these adjustments, uh, but the average person at home probably won't have access to a truing stand, uh, so we're just going to use the frame of the bike as our truing stand. Alright, so I got the wheel mounted back on the bike with the bike flipped upside down and I actually uh, tightened on the wheel nuts just to make sure that my wheel is going to stay put when I'm doing the next step that I'm going to do now. So what you've got to do is you have to make systematic adjustments to the spokes to make sure that uh, four separate things are set correctly for this wheel. So item number one is making sure that the wheel is true. As you can see as the wheel spins it kind of wobbles back and forth from side to side because this wheel is not yet true. That's one thing we have to ensure by the end of this is set correctly. The second item which is kind of related is to make sure that our wheel is properly centered between the two pieces of the frame so that it will be symmetrical on the bike. So as you can see I've got a ruler pushed up against the frame and I've got it set so that zero is sitting over there near the, uh, the edge of the frame over there and I've got ten so it's just about over the edge of that part of the frame there and to get it centered we want to make sure that the wheel is sitting so that five is basically in the middle of the wheel so we can see right from here that the wheel needs to come um, you know a few millimeters to the right. 
And the third item is you want to make sure that the wheel stays round and it doesn't start to become shaped like an oval. Uh, so in other words, you want to make sure that the distance between the hub to the outside of the rim at all points um, is equal. So one way to check that is by using the ruler method again. Um, but this time when I spin the wheel, what we're looking for is how much of a gap there is between the ruler and the wheel. So when I spin it, you can see that it kind of gets narrower there. And by moving the ruler in that direction, um, you can actually make it rub on the ruler a little bit. And that'll help you to be able to find the spots um, where it's higher than it should be. And the fourth and final item is to make sure that the spokes stay at the correct tension while you're making adjustments to correct all of the other things. So for item number one, which is truing the wheel, um, I actually have a full separate video which is called How to True a Wheel on a Bicycle, uh, which I recommend watching for getting your wheels so it'll be nice and true. In terms of item number two, which is making sure that the wheel is properly centered in the frame, um, the way you can do that is, if you'll notice, half of the spokes um, are connected to one side of the hub and the other half are connected to the other side of the hub. Uh, so what you can do, if it's you know too far on this side, is you tighten up all the spokes which go to this side and loosen all the spokes on this side and uh, you know you want to make sure you do that in a systematic way uh, so basically you know going around the wheel um, and doing you know an even amount of turns like maybe a half turn or a quarter turn uh, to each one um, and they, they alternate so you know this one goes to the right side this one goes to the left side uh, so you want to you know loosen that one and tighten that one and uh, you know work your way around the whole wheel uh, starting from the valve stem and ending at the valve stem. In terms of item number three, which is making sure that the wheel stays round, um, it's actually kind of similar to truing the wheel. Uh, what you want to do is by spinning it, you want to find the areas uh, that are irregular, so the parts you know where it's either really high or it's really low. Um, and if it's you know it's extra high in that section, what you want to do is you want to tighten up the spokes that are you know all along that section there. And if it's a spot where it's low, then you want to loosen all the spokes uh, which are in that section where they're low, and uh, that should help to make it round. In terms of item number four, which is making sure that the spokes are at the right tension, uh, you basically just repeat the process that I already showed earlier in the video. Um, if they're too loose, then you go all the way around and you just do an even amount of tightening you know, of every single spoke all the way around the wheel. And if it's too tight, then you do the same thing except um, you loosen every spoke an equal amount. So in terms of doing the four items, what you want to do is you want to start with whichever is the worst of the four items. Uh, you want to find, you know, which is the furthest from being correct and fix that one first, and then move on from there and do the next worst, and just, you know, go all the way through until you've done all four items, and uh, the wheel is looking good on all four accounts. In my case, um, the rim is, is, the centeredness of the rim is probably the worst of the, the four, so that's what I'm going to start with. And after I've done that, I'll reassess and figure out, you know, which is the next worst thing, and uh, just you know, systematically go through until my rim is really nice and good. And uh, you'll kind of find that after you've corrected one thing, it'll kind of mess up the other things. Um, but you know, you just keep keep taking that you know recursive approach until you've gone all the way through and you've gotten everything. Um, so that you know, the worst thing is is really not that bad at all. Um, in that respect, it's kind of like doing a Rubik's cube. All right, so I spent some time making lots of little adjustments and I got it to a point where I'm happy with uh, all four criteria. Uh, so that means I'm ready to take the wheel back off the bike, install the cassette back on and the tire, and I uh, should be good to ride this on the road again. Now you may notice for the first 100 kilometers or so um, that the wheel will start to go out of true uh, fairly quickly. Um, that's just caused from the new rim kind of adapting to the wheel. I mean, it's a brand new rim, um, so it still has to adjust uh, to having all the forces and everything from the road. So when that does happen, all you've got to do is just make lots of small little adjustments to the spokes uh, to make sure that all four criteria are met again. And uh, you know, after you've adjusted it, after riding on it a bit, um, it should stay that way for quite a long time. So that concludes this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And thanks for watching.